what I do? An artist? An accountant? A teacher? A mother? Or am I what I've achieved? An honor student? An MVP? A winner? 
Am I the things I've done right? Or am I defined by the things I've done wrong? Am I a saint? A sinner? What about what others think of me? Am I all of these things? None of these things? Who am I? How I identify myself determines how I approach life. If I am what I do, I'll always need to do more and achieve more to find my value. If I am what others say, I'll always try to please people instead of my Heavenly Father. But if I listen to who God says I am and embrace His identity in me, I'll find the freedom to live out all He has planned for me. God calls me His child. He says I am wise and restored, that I'm a brand new creation in Christ. I am chosen and holy and blameless before God. He calls me His masterpiece. I am loved by God. He says I am made complete through the grace and mercy of Jesus, my Savior. And when I see myself the way God sees me, I walk with confidence because I trust the one who answers the question, Who am I? Sound. 
Welcome to Grace Unlimited Church Online. We are so happy that you have joined us in this glorious day. Amen. Praise the Lord. I would like to invite everyone on this glow, watching us wherever you are watching us from. I want you to join in God's peace and grace as you listen to the undiluted word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we begin, I would like to invite the praise team so that we all can join and worship God in truth and in spirit. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. So as we worship the Lord of all lords and the King of all kings, please join us. And as we worship Him today, let's look unto God's goodness and grace to all of us. Amen. And 
call upon your name. Hallelujah to Jesus. We want to appreciate God for the life of the worshippers. For those who have worshipped the Lord in truth and in spirit, we ask that the good Lord will bless you wherever you're watching from. Amen. Before we start fully into the word of the Lord, I want us to bow our heads wherever you are right now. And let's talk to the Jehovah Lord, the mighty God. Amen. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you for this day. Lord, we are about to dish into your word. We ask for wisdom. We ask for knowledge. We ask the Lord that your presence will go ahead of us, that your presence will be with us even in this period. Thank you, everlasting God. Every soul that is watching, wherever they are watching from, Lord, we ask that you affect their lives positively in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Our topic for today is titled The Presence of God. The Presence of God. I want us to open our verse, our Bibles, to Exodus chapter 3, chapter 33, verse 11 to 23. I might not have time to read all, but I want all to be very, very attentive. Amen. Exodus chapter 33, from verse 11. And it says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friends. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yea, thou hast said, I knowest thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in thy sight. Verse 13, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that the nation is thy people. Verse 14, which is the most significant verse, it says, And he said, My presence will go with thee, and I will give the rest. We might not have time to read other places, but we want to capitalize on verse 14. It says, my presence will go with thee, and I will give the rest. And our topic today is the presence of the Lord. What do we understand by the presence of the Lord? The presence of God is the key to the glory of God. The presence of God gives way to issues, to difficult situations. The absence of God's presence is the presence of limitation. The absence of God's presence is the presence of setback, struggle, disfavor. No man can fake the presence of the Lord. I hear sometimes you see people sing in the church and they preach and they say, Oh, I can feel God's presence. Hey, you cannot fake the presence of the Lord. If his presence is not there, the presence is not there. Hallelujah. What attributes to the presence of the Lord is how much you know God, 
how much you devote your time to commune with God, that is what attributes to the presence of the Lord. No man can fake the presence of God. There is nothing that God is involved that fails. Whenever God is involved in the life of a man, things might not be working as expected from the onset. But as long as God is involved in your life, things will definitely take shape. God, my God is not a failure. So God cannot involve in your life and you become a failure. God has an agenda for every man. God has a purpose for every man. He said for those that serve God in truth and in spirit. If you serve God in truth and in spirit, you will definitely have an end result. Hallelujah. You cannot get knowledge in the classroom. But God, you can get knowledge in the classroom. People go to schools to acquire knowledge, to acquire all manner of knowledge in different books. But God's presence come with heavenly price. A man once said, salvation is free, but you must buy a Bible. It means everything in life is not that free. Whatever you must achieve in God's presence, you will work for it. There are men who don't sleep at night. While others sleep, they are deeply communing with the Almighty God. The Bible says, why men slept, the enemy came and saw an evil ties. It means 90% of what happens to humanity in life happens at midnight while they are sleeping. It doesn't mean natural sleeping at night. There are men who are living, but they are sleeping. What do we understand by the word sleeping here? When a man cannot pray, when a man cannot find time to commune with his creator, it means such a man is sleeping. Any arrow, anything that, that the enemy throws at him immediately can get to him. The presence of God is the key to the glory of God. How much do we know this God? There are times it looks like nothing is happening. But a man that is with God, we know that the presence of God is there. A time came when horses, men of horses and chariots were coming to attack Gehazi and Elisha. And Gehazi was so scared. And he ran to his master. He said, Master, Master, the man has come to take over us. And he said, Oh Lord, let his spiritual eyes be open. And while his spiritual eyes were open, he could see legions of angels standing on the hills guiding them. It takes a man who understands the mystery of God to understand that the presence of the Lord is always with him. Elijah, Elisha could feel the impact and the presence of the Lord. That was why he was never scared of the armies and legions coming to them. Because he knew that the presence of the Lord was with me. Moses went to the mountain to commune with the Almighty God. And for the first time in the history of the planet, Moses was able to commune with God face to face. But he could see the behind of the Most High. But even at that, when he came down from the mountain, men could not behold his face because the beauty and the radiance of his face was so strong. You cannot behold the presence of the Lord and things does not turn around for you. You cannot fake it. For the first time in the history of life, whenever a man come in contact with God, Whenever a man comes in contact with the power of God, sometimes he does not need to advertise himself. God will advertise such a man. Sometimes he does not need to tell people, I have gone to be with the Lord, I have gone to know the Lord. People will see you and they will say, no, this one is of the Lord. There are times you don't need to begin to call people and begin to preach the gospel. Men will see you and say, no, I want to serve your God because we have seen God in you. The presence of God has much impact in the life of every man. It is not about going to church. It is not about participating in everything in the, in the church. It is about your commune, your commune, your closeness with God. 
a philosopher once asked a question. He said, can your character recognize your reputation in the dark when no one is watching? If all I do or all you do is at night, you pray and pray and pray and pray, definitely people will see the evidence in the morning. Because you cannot bow before God and bow before man. You bow before God and you stand before men. That is the essence of being attached to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can, you can get knowledge in the classroom, but God's presence comes with heavenly price. We pay price to get an attribute of the presence of the Lord. What are the prices you pay? Deep study. Consistent prayer. Knowing much about the God that you have come to know that he is the almighty God. David prayed a prayer. He said, oh Lord, I have heard about your exploits in the past. How much you felt our fellow fathers in the wilderness. You gave them manners in the wilderness. You could not allow them to die. Lord, this is my own time. Do it again. Because he understood the personality of the God he was calling upon. I have heard of what you did in the past. I have heard of what you did to my forefathers. I heard them like in the history. But I am now present. I am calling on you to do the same. Because the Bible says he is the Lord of yesterday, today and forever. It means if he has done it before, he will still do it again. David could understand. He saw from afar that Goliath did not carry the presence of the Lord. David did not just confront Goliath. Spiritually, he has seen that Goliath might be a giant in the physical realm, but spiritually, he was nothing. He understood the capacity of God's presence around him. And he said, who art thou you to defile the, who are you uncircumcised Philippians? To speak ill of my God. There was something about David that others did not understand. It was not about size. God does not go to men of size. It is not about how handsome and how beautiful you look. It is not about how eloquent you can speak English. It is not about how much you could dress and fit up good. It goes beyond that. God is looking for a man who is hunger for him. God is looking for a man who will do anything to get close to the power and the efficacy of the Almighty. God is looking for men who will not sleep until they have found the answer to the attributes of the closeness to God. And when God sent, um, sent prophet, uh, prophet Samuel to go and anoint, go to the house of Jesse and anoint a king, when he got there, he saw great men. He saw men of standard. He saw men of honor. But God said, none of these men I have selected. There is one in the bush. There is one that carries my presence. There is one that understands what it takes to be a son of the Most High. And that was why David was able to defeat Goliath. He said, I come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He did not come in his own name. He came in the name above every other name. The name of Jesus. Life does not function by age or degree, but God's presence in the life of a man. How much qualification you have in life does not matter. God, what matters is how much of God in you. Psalms chapter 16 verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand, there are pleasures of evermore. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. 
How would you feel that each time you sleep and if there is anything that is about to happen to you, God will show you that this is what is about to happen? How would you feel that when there are troubles or situations that are about to confront you, God will speak to you, my son, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? He told Moses, go and tell them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. It takes a man who has been in the presence of the Lord to hear God firmly. It takes a man who has dwelt with God consistently to understand the will and the ways of the Lord. A man that carries God's presence can never be discouraged. Because no matter how the situation is, God has foreseen and God has shown him that this is what lies ahead. I gave us a story. I woke up this morning, even before I was called upon, and I began to digress. What, what is happening? What is happening to situations and life? The questions begin to ring into my head. What does the presence of the Lord got to do with the personality of human? And it took me back to way back in school. I remember a day I was in my room and I was preparing what to eat. And suddenly two friends walked into my room. One of my friends loves playing this guitar. He came to the room and he began to play guitar. Personally, I don't know how to sing. But I just love worshiping God in my dialect. So the moment he came to the room and he was playing that guitar, I began to sing. I worship God to a point where I got lost. But something significant happened that day. And that is why I say you can never fake the presence of the Lord. When it comes, it, leaves a, it, it must leave a sign that the presence of the Lord has come in the life of this man. While we were singing and he was playing the guitar and I was singing with the lady, suddenly I felt a cold hand from behind that tapped me and I turned with force and I could not see anyone. And from that day, I realized that each time I go to church, I could sing and worship for hours without non-stop. Because at that point, what I was doing was what brought God's presence. And God's presence, whenever he comes into your life at that moment, whatever you are doing at that moment become part of your life. You can't fake the presence of the Lord. When it comes in your life, people will see the handwriting over you. This man carries the presence of the Lord. This man has been with the Lord. His presence was upon Daniel. No wonder the lions that were meant to devour him became his comforters. Imagine the lion becoming a pillow to Daniel. If we read Daniel chapter 3, verse 25, if we read Daniel chapter 6, verse 3, verse 25, told us about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar made, craved a golden image. He said, everyone should bow before this God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we will not bow down to any grieving image. And suddenly they were picked up. The furnace was increased seven times. Most of us know the story. And they threw them into the furnace. But something significant happened. Instead of them to be burnt, there was a fourth man in the furnace. And who was that fourth man? The presence of God. The presence of God showed up when every other man has been discouraged. When man has given up on life and you are still standing firm, trusting and holding God, God will show up, not for you to take the glory, but for him alone to take the glory. And that is why we call him the God of last hour, the God of last minute. It doesn't matter how battered and shattered your life is. When God steps into your life, things begin to take shape. The timing of God is not the same timing as man. When God sets in your life in his own timing, 
He erases the past and all you could see is a glorious future. His presence turns hatred to love. Genesis chapter 39, we look at the events of Joseph. His brother sold him out of hatred. He went to Potiphar's house. He was wrongly accused out of hatred. He was dumped in the prison for years out of hatred. But while in this process, he did not stop trusting God. No one would have known the, his the history of Joseph will not have been written in the Bible if he had given up in the past. But he stood fame. He understood what it means to operate in the presence of the Lord. And at last, he became a prime minister in an unknown land, in a foreign land, because he was with the presence of God. He understands what it means to operate with God. And God, cause, sometimes God will cause a problem that you alone will have the solution. Because he wants to make a way for you. How can a king have a dream that only one man has the answer and the solution? The magicians could do nothing. Look at the events of Daniel. Do you know even when Darius the king died, the mother, the wife to Darius, when the son took over as the king, and the mother said, if you want to succeed, go to Daniel. What was so significant about Daniel? He said, your father succeeded because he walked with Daniel. Daniel was a man who understood the presence of God. Daniel was a man who understood what it means to operate with God. And that was what made Daniel so significant in the history of Babylon. He excelled even after the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. He, the, the wife to Nebuchadnezzar told his son, if you must succeed in this kingdom, go and look for Daniel. A man who operates with God. A man who understands the significance of God's presence wherever he goes. He does not need to advertise himself. God will always advertise such a man. Daniel did not go and start lobbying like every other man. Please, I want to work in your government. I want to know the power of God that was operating in him had a magnetic field that operates and magnet men to him. There are men that don't struggle. There are men that, don't, that they, they don't go looking for things. God will always make things come their way. Because when you bury yourself praying and trusting God, God will definitely make a way where there is no way. Amen. The presence of God changes protocols. There are people that wherever they go, laws that are made does not hold them down. God will always make protocols. Things begin to change for their sake. You are working in a company, you are working in a social place. They said, people that work here don't get this. People that grow from this family don't get to this level. People that operate from here, maybe at the age of this, at the age of 40, they will be disgraced or they will die. But when it gets to you, God for your sake changes protocol. It does not just happen like that. It takes a man who has been with God to contact such power and efficacy. The both of you are doing the same thing. And suddenly there was a mistake. But the next person is sacked and you are told you stay. There are things that are not just ordinary. God will always have a way to exonerate his own. But you need to study, you need to be with God to understand the presence of God. Sometimes men will insult you that what you are doing is abstract. Sometimes men will speak ill against you that where you are operating from does not really matter. But in that state, as long as you know that God is speaking, you stand firm. 
the presence of God lead the pathway to life. What is the pathway to life? Salvation and righteousness. What is the pathway to life? What is it that makes you happy even when there is no job? The world is on standstill. Men are dying. People are crying. Families are being divided. Sorrow everywhere. But in the family of many, they sleep and they wake up and they trust God. They trust and they believe God. Joshua said, I and my household have decided to serve the Lord. There was something he saw before he made that statement. He has understood that a man that operates with God does not struggle for anything. What is your decision today? There is nothing you desire in this life that God cannot give you. You know, each time you sleep and you wake up and you have a glorious future of how tomorrow looks like, you are comfortable, you are relaxed. You might not have the money. You might not have the job now. But believe me, overtaking is allowed. David inquired of the Lord, should I pursue? And the Lord said, pursue, overtake, and recover all. You sometimes, there are places you study in the Bible and you begin to ask yourself, how comes? How can Elijah run faster than horses and chariots of Ahab? It takes a man who has been with God to operate in such speed. The speed that is as fast as the velocity of light. The presence of the Lord gives us strategy to victory. I remember my pastor way back and he said he was working in an oil company in the rig where they uh, drill crude oil and suddenly one of their machines broke down. They invited engineers from here and there to fix the machine, but none of them could. And he said that night he slept and there was a revelation. And God showed him a revelation on how and how to go about the machine. And when he woke up, he went there. And after all, he fixed the machine. And the machine began to operate. And that was the beginning of his promotion in that company. The presence of God gives you strategy to every aspect of life. To every situation of life. God will always give you strategies on how to operate. God will always give you strategies on how to get your victory. When men are sleeping, the Bible says, why men slept, the enemy came and saw an evil ties. At the same time, why men slept, God can be showing you revelations of greater things that will come to be. God can show you revelations of bigger things that is ahead of you. You know what it means for a man to get married and there is no child, but yet the man is saying, God told me that you will give birth to this. You will give birth to triplets. You will have a baby. It takes a man of revelation who has been with God to have such positive confession. What confession are you telling yourself? Sometimes you cannot give yourself confession if you have not heard from the Lord. If you have not been with the Lord. But when you are with God, God foresees what is ahead of you. And he tells you, my son, do your belt and be strong because what lies ahead of you is victory. No one in the Bible says, whose report will I believe? He says, I shall believe the report of the Lord. Because whatever the Lord says is fame, is sealed. The presence of God brings divine revelation. And what do we call revelation? Seeing tomorrow today. Seeing the future now, even though you are still in now. And what does revelation do in the life of people? If right now I don't have a job, if right now things are very tough, and yet each time I sleep, God shows me what lies ahead of me. All I need to do is to wait patiently on God. Because the timing of God is not the timing of man. But the moment I get into God's timing, 
whatever program the Lord has for me will definitely come to pass. But all I need to do is to trust God and remain with God. Because what lies ahead is far more bigger than what we are operating now. There are people who knows you now that might not be able to know you in the next five years. There are people who sees you now and look down on you, but in the next five years, they might not be able to behold you because things will have changed for the better. But it takes a man who understands the principle of God to hold God firm. There is nobody that just wake up anywhere and became what he wants to be. Every great man of God once upon a time had a moment of wilderness. And that is the process you know God. That is what we call the quarry site. The quarry site is where the shaping rocks, where rocks are being broken and properly shaped. In the quarry site is where rocks are being shaped to shape. It's where stones are being cut to shape. But in that process, every human being has a quarry site. You might be going through your own now. I might be going through my own. Someone else might have gone through his own, has received his victory. But what is the difference between you going through your own right now and someone who has gone ahead of you? Your ability to trust in the Lord is what makes the difference. So many have tried and gave up in the course of it and they died. So many have tried and gave up in the course of it and they failed. Failure is never an excuse. God needs men who are determined. That's why I said from the beginning, the presence of the Lord is a prize. You, there are prizes you must pay to get there. To find God's presence, you must seek the Lord. Psalm 63 from verse 1 to 3. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in dry and in thirsty land. Where is where there is no water? To see the power and the glory so as to have seen thee in thy sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life and my lips shall praise thee. Get addicted to the word of the Lord. Don't wait for men to tap you and say, it is time, let us pray. Don't wait for men to cuddle you and say, it is time, study the word. The Bible says, pray in season and out of season. Get addicted to the word of the Lord. The presence of the Lord brings liberty. Hallelujah. The presence of God is a commanding force that transforms destiny and life within hours, within few seconds. Suddenly you meet a man today who is begging on the streets and tomorrow such a man is giving arms and helping many. God has the personality and the capacity to change any human at any given time and every given point. The presence of God is a commanding force. Moses encountered the presence of God in the mountain Mo Horeb. And men could not stand it. And that's why I said you cannot fake the presence of God. When you feel the impact of the presence, you will know that this is God. A man who carries the presence of God is a commander and commanders are always in charge. When you go to the army and you see this is the commanding force of this brigade, this is this, this is that. Whenever you see them, you will know that yes, this one has been to so many war. This one has been to so many training. You don't just get recruited into the army today and you become a commander or army chief tomorrow, no. It takes processes, and that is the quarry site. You don't just get born again today and tomorrow you are moving up there. Oh, I am, I am a prophet. I am this. I'm, no, it takes processes. It takes time. Sometimes God needs to ascertain you. If I give this person 
this grace, if I give this person this power, this anointing, how well can he use it for my kingdom? Every human needs the presence of God so that we can know when God is saying something and when God is speaking something. Trust me, your today has nothing to do with your tomorrow. It might not be working fine now, but as long as your life is attached to the life of God, there is a glorious tomorrow. Men will have written you off. People will have casted you out of your family that you cannot amount to anything. Jabez was born in sorrow. His mother called him Jabez that signifies sorrow. But he woke up one day and realized that I cannot do it alone. And he invited God in his life. And the Bible says, he's prayed a prayer, let my countenance be changed. And the Lord enlarged the countenance of Jabez. And it was reckoned in the Bible that even though he was born in sorrow, even though his father's name was never mentioned in the Bible, but yet he was a great man because he invited the king of kings in his life. Do not allow your background to put your back on the ground. Do not allow the family reputation where you're coming from to affect your glorious tomorrow. Your belief in God matters. And your trust in God is all you need. Hallelujah. You can't carry God's presence and never be noticed. It can't be hidden. It makes your case different. You will become a topic in the lips of everyone because you are operating in the presence of God. Wherever men see you, they will know that of the truth, this one understands the power and the presence of God. Father, we bless your name for the word. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, everlasting God, for your word. Understanding the presence of God. Understanding the personality of God. Operating in the presence of God is what gives, what will give you victory in this point in time. Can we bow our eyes as we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for this word. Thank you for today. Lord, we ask for your presence wherever we go. Father, we are nothing without you. We cannot amount to anything without you. Moses felt your presence. Elijah felt your presence. Elisha felt your presence. David felt your presence. Samuel felt your presence. O oh Lord our God, we ask that in this our own time, give us the ability to feel your presence. Thank you for today. Before we round up, we want to invite the choir once more to lead us to worship, that we lift up our soul to heaven and sing once again to invite the presence of the Lord. Moses said, I will go nowhere if your presence does not go with me. Let's invite the presence of the Lord, that the presence of the Lord will take over this vicinity. That whomsoever that is watching me, wherever you are watching from, wherever you are listening from, that the presence of the Lord will engulf you and you will begin to fake things that are meant to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Join us again in worship and let's all together claim and believe it that no matter what situations you are into, God will be with us. He do it before and surely he will do it once again. Allow me to share this verse to you in Deuter Deuteronomy 31 chapter 6 and it says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them, 
for the Lord your God will, person, will, will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Hallelujah.
me still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never fail Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Oh faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me yet Never failed me You never will forget I never will forget You never failed me yet Thank you for watching. Thank you for the choir. Thank you for everyone who has watched. Thank you wherever you are. If you have your prayer request, you can type it in the comments below and the message and the Church of God will be praying for you wherever you are. Join us once again next Friday at GU Church Online. And if you have been blessed by this message, please kindly share it and let someone else be blessed wherever they are. And if you are out there and you are looking for an opportunity to give your life to Christ, I want you to lift up your hands and place it on your heart and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, dwell in me, dwell in my heart, change me for the better. Let the mercy of the Lord speak for me and let the grace of the Lord be upon me. Change my life that I will begin to walk in righteousness. In Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, say God bless you wherever you are and may the gift of God be upon you. I want you to continue worshiping in any living church and believing that you, God alone, can change you. No man can change you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I want to declare to your life this week that the blessings of the Lord will be upon you, that the favor of the Lord will be upon you, that the grace of God will be upon you, that the peace of God that supersedes all will reign over your life. Remain blessed that the presence of God will always be with you. Amen. Amen.